All right, welcome back, everybody. We're going to do a little bit of a garden tour, but it's mostly going to be peppers. I'm not really going to go too much into the tomatoes or the other plants. Maybe I'll just give you a glimpse of them, but this is really going to be like a pepper garden tour for all the pepper people out there. Now, um, I'm just going to show you what I have grown. I'm a little bit behind schedule on some things, so... But I'll show you what I got growing. I'll try to point out the highlight stuff, the stuff that I'm really looking forward to. And, um, you know, what to, what to look forward to at the end of the year as far as either fruit or seeds available. Some things I'm probably going to offer some fresh peppers for because I'm going to have a lot of leftovers. But I can't make a guarantee on that. And you're going to kind of have to request it. Uh, because it's not just something I'm going to build web pages for and start offering fresh peppers. It's too much work and... It's very seasonal. It has to be picked per order. So I'm, it's not something I'm looking to do. But uh, let's give you a tour. Let me turn you around and uh, let's show you what we got going on. All right, so we got a bunch of stuff going on over here. Um, in general, my peppers are usually like about a foot higher this time of the year. We're really low. Uh, one of the reasons was um, when I first started my peppers, first of all, I started late this year. I just didn't have time. There's a lot going on in my life right now. So I didn't have time to really get started in like early March or February or even January. Uh, you really want to get started early with peppers. So by the time you bring them out, they're like already fully grown or they're mature enough where they can handle it, the, uh, the transition. Uh, that's a whole nother story. But uh, I started late. That's the first thing. The second thing is is that um, what happened was is one day I forgot to open my greenhouse. I fell. I laid down and I fell asleep. I didn't want to do that, but I did. And I forgot to open my greenhouse. Like I woke up early and I laid back down. I fell asleep and I didn't wake up till like I don't know eleven o'clock or something. As a result of that, the sun was out. It was cooking. It reached about 150 degrees in my greenhouse, and it pretty much sterilized the entire greenhouse. Everything was basically burnt to the ground. It was all like flat and like laying down. That's what you're looking at here. Most of this here, I started afterwards because I thought all this was going to die. So all of this was started afterwards. But this stuff here and a lot of this stuff here was the stuff that basically got burned off. Now, in the beginning part of the year, I did notice aphids starting to come on my new starts. And as a result of that, it solved the aphid problem because it literally was like an oven in here, like 150 degrees for like two hours and it pretty much killed any form of living anything except for these plants <clears throat> now i did lose probably about a dozen plants and i had to start them over which i did but they're small um but as a result of that that whole burning off top part of the plant and everything the it, it killed the aphids that was good but the the problem was is that it, it took it took them a long time to come out of that that uh that you know that getting roasted in and basically an oven and it took them a long time to come out but as you can see even though they were almost all dead as you can see they bounced back and they survived uh, like i said about a dozen plants didn't survive because they got cooked so bad that um they were just gone and unfortunately some of those were uh, very important varieties that i was depending on growing so that kind of a thing happens. But anyway, guys, I just wanted to let you know, this is if you ever burn your plants, like you happen to leave them in your greenhouse and you didn't open up your greenhouse and it got to 150 and your plants are all like flat on the ground and like basically cooked like it. It literally smelled like uh, cooked uh, chard when I walked in my greenhouse. It smelled like cooked chard. It smelled like I just got done cooking spinach or chard or something, that, that green smell. Kind of smelled like that. The whole greenhouse was like, it smelled like I just walked into an oven. And um, everything was pretty much, I thought, dead. But I tried. I took them out. I left them on the side. And then, again, I started them, and these were these were secondary. The good thing about what happened with that, even though I don't, don't recommend doing that, the good thing about what happened was is all my plants are now going into a um, – they're all going into a major flowering uh, uh, stage right now while they're small. Usually my plants are – up about a foot higher and then they just start flowering now the problem with that is, is the plants get really big yeah a lot of people tell me you need to top the plants and you get them flowering small guys every time you top your plants it, it you can do that but you need a lot of room to, when you do that and the 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 disadvantage of that is 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 the the bees and everything else will tend to um 
They cross pollinate it easier because there's so much room around it. They can get all the way around the plant. Like when my canopies are thick like this, the bees can't get into the center of it. Number one, number two, uh, my doors are generally shut in here. By the time my first batches of flowers, which are all my lower flowers on the bottom, they're already flowered and pollinated and turned to fruit already before the bees even get in here. Uh, because I don't really open the doors and I have a screen on top that I shut, right? So nothing could get in here and cross pollinate. Usually the upper stuff here, I'm usually cutting off before I bring the plants in for winter anyway. So I don't care about the upper canopy. I just care about all the fruit at the lower end because those are the first fruits that come out. They're not cross pollinated and they stay good. It's upper stuff I usually cut off anyway and I and I eat it and stuff like that. So all the middle and lower stuff that the, the uh, bees can't get to. Okay, so anyways... Uh, let's take a look at some of the things we got here. We got the yellow pin peter here. I'm, I'm regrowing this one out. This was a cross that I don't remember if I made it or it was an accidental cross. I don't know. I'm, I'm selling it. I think I'm selling it on my website. I don't know. Um, one of the varieties that came out of it, I believe, was called, I called it French fries because it looked like French fries when you take them out. It was like a thing of like McDonald's French fries. That's kind of what it looked like. Um, but I have an, one here and I have one in the back. And it kind of looks like it's starting to um, turn back into a Peter pepper. So it's very possible um, it might go back into the yellow Peter, which is kind of good because I need my yellow Peter seeds. But uh, originally, uh, that's what this all came from. So I don't remember if it was a cross I made or something else. Now, another variety I'm really excited about uh, that's coming in and it's producing quite a bit of fruit is this here. And this is this is Catherine Cardiancy. But this is actually uh, called Roca Pico. And a lot of people aren't sure about this variety. They don't know if it crossed over with a pubescence or what. They don't know if it slightly crossed with a ricotto. Because if you look at the flowers, they kind of look ricotto-ish. Like, they kind of got that ricotto look to them. But yet they look like, um, you know, a cardiancy flower. Which I have cardiancy growing true form. I'll show you what that looks like. So it's it's a lot of people are on a fence about it. However, uh, I have spoken to other botanists who properly identified that particular variety of plant, and it's actually Capsicum cardiancy variety pendulum. So this is already becoming a mainstream variety of cardiancy in some of these countries. They're actually selling them in the streets. It's already being cultivated. It's a very popular variety. It has a nice, interesting flavor. We'll do a pod review on that later in the year. But I have a couple of plants in other areas as well. Uh, let's see what else we got here that might be interesting. We have... Oh, that's just a that's mustard habanero. You, you don't care about any of that stuff. You want the weird stuff. All right, this is pretty weird. So I've been trying to grow this uh, uh, variety now, regrow it again. I'm trying to bring it back to life. Um, uh, originally, I got seed from um, Mojo Peppers. That's originally where I got it. Yes, there's some people out there that are saying that he stole the, the, the strains and Enrique went off the wall with it. And it's, it could be true. It could not be true. I don't know. I'm just going by what I have here. And um, I'm trying to bring back some of these phenotypes. I'm trying to really, really concentrate on selection as I let these phenos mature. As you can see here, there's a beautiful phenos coming out of this plant. And this, this variety was called the Peach Gum Tiger V1. And then there's a Peach Gum Tiger V2, which I'm growing both of those. I'm really trying to get this particular pheno really stabilized. I really like this variety a lot. Uh, it's very, very hot. It's a very, very um, excruciatingly hot bleeding uh, calyx variety. So uh, that's that's one that I'm kind of excited. I'm trying to bring that one back. Uh, what else we got? We got a bunch of stuff in here. I'm not going to go over every one. Um, just trying to point out what I can actually show you. We got daytail orange. This is daytail pepper. This is an orange, off orange pheno, or at least I believe it's an off orange pheno. Maybe it's a yellow. Maybe it's really yellow. It just happened to turn orange that particular year because of the sunlight or whatnot like that. So we're regrowing out to see if the daytail actually turned orange or is it stay yellow. We'll see what that, what it, what it does. Sometimes yellow peppers will get orangish when they really, really ripen up. So it could just be that. But either way, I need daytail pepper seeds, so we're growing it. <laughs> And this is the original daytail, by the way. There's a lot of people selling daytail peppers out there, and they're not the correct pheno for that. But this is the original pheno. This I've bought this seed like maybe 
I don't know, maybe 10, 12 years ago. So this is still from the original seed. So it's still coming true, and it's it's a great variety to grow. It's a very hot one. It's like in that habanero heat type. Guadalupe Black. We got all kinds of stuff in there, guys. I can't go through every one of them. I'm just looking for the highlight stuff here. I don't know what this is. Kind of volunteer, but I'm leaving it in there because it's helping balance the moisture on the on the uh, the soil below. We got a lot of really cool varieties though coming in this year. And as you can see, everything's pretty much got flowers on it this year, which is good for me. I don't have to wait for the plant to literally get to eight feet tall before it. And and yet it has a little bit of height. As you can see, we got some height on there. But it's not going to get eight feet tall and put all this energy into uh, vegetation. I wanted to start putting it into the flowering stage, which is where we are. <clears throat> so I got to kind of, I got to kind of bump up the the phosphorus a little bit more, which is what I'm doing, and I'm getting a nice effect on the flowering on a lot of plants that weren't. A lot of these plants weren't giving me uh, flowers in many years past, uh, like Kabaka, the Kabaka Roxa here. I've been growing that for about three years. I've never got it to even flower. This year, it's starting to flower. So we got flowers coming out. That's the first time I ever got Kabaka Roxa to flower. I don't know why. I do everything I can to try to get it. I've wintered these plants over. I've had this. I've had Kabaka Roxa literally winter over for like two years, and it's never flowered. I literally chucked the plant out after a while because I just got frustrated. It just happens, you know what I mean? Um, so, but we're growing it again and we're actually getting flowers on it this year. So that's good. I've got flowers coming off some of my other plants. Uh, HR116 Black Rib. This is the Black Rib variety. We're bringing, we're not bringing it back, but we're growing it out again this year to kind of get fresh seed off it. The other ones, uh, they're getting seeds starting to get old, but they still sprout. As you can see, it's growing fine, uh, but we're going to get some fresh seed out of it. Uh, let's see. There's some other stuff in the back. I think we got Primo. What? We got Primo. Primatali in the back. Uh, I shouldn't leave that one back there. It's too late, though. I, for me to move these now is a nightmare. And Primatali's in the back. And again, these are mostly doubles. This is mostly repeats of what you already got over there. But they're beautiful plants, as you can see. I'm going to take you out in the garden and show you what's going on out there. But... Uh, we got some really, really cool stuff. This is Camaro de Par. This one's got a little bit of yellowing. It didn't like me bringing it in and then bringing it out. And I started getting, uh, I started getting those damn, uh, those aphids again. And as a result of that, I have to get all my plants out of here when I start getting aphids. And, and let me warn you guys about something here too. Uh, be very careful with that peat moss that you're getting from Lowe's and some of these other places. Those things are literally infested with insects, especially these fungus gnats. I, that's where my fungus, I started getting a, a real heavy fungus snap problem. That's all coming from that peat moss, guys. So if you're going to use Lowe's peat moss, those big bales, so you got to somehow solarize it or you're going to have to cook it somehow to kill all that uh, biology in there because uh, I got I got quite a few uh, fungus gnats coming up here. Though they're not killing the plants. I just can't stand them. I don't like them. I hate those things. And, uh, yeah, they're coming in and it's annoying me. And so... Uh, we got a lot of cool stuff there. A lot of the stuff you've already seen. Orange blob right here. We're growing orange blob. Um, Uchu cream. That's a nice one. I like that one a lot. Uh, this in the back here is a wild... I think this is called, um... Etubriosum? Or maritinum. Solana maritinum or etubriosum. I'm not sure what it is. It makes it beautiful purple flowers when it's ready. I think... I don't remember. I don't know which one that is. I forgot the species of that one. I don't know. There's so many things going on here. This is just, um, this is a dull tomato, which I got to get rid of, but this thing popped up in here. I'm dying to see what this is. I'm just leaving this go for now because I do like to eat dull tomatoes. I do like them. And they taste so good. They make a good jam, too. Uh, yeah, this is just more of the same, really. There's not much different with this stuff. They're just kind of growing them out and bulking them up. You know, again, if I see some aphids on the leaves, you just go and you squish them off. Uh, in general, I spray them. And uh, just the main thing is, is the lower leaves, when you get an aphid problem, the best thing to do is to remove the first six inches of lower leaves on a plant because that's where they infestate. And then they all run up to the tops of the plant to infest the tops. You just spray down on a regular basis and you'll keep it under control. You're not going to get rid of them, but you'll keep it under control. If you don't do that, it will absolutely go completely bonkers. They literally go through a doubling effect. So it starts off at one, then two, then four, then eight. 
then 16 and 32 and the next thing you know it's like every day a million you're getting a million aphids a day they're just doubling in size so keep it under control and uh you'll keep them out of the out of the, out the problem you'll keep the problem under control yeah, there's some more dwarf tomato varieties extras that i have i kind of threw everything in here this year um i'm probably going to take up this shelf i'm gonna probably i'm not sure how i'm going to do it but i might take that up and just build a raised bed in here and just go all the way across and just get rid of the shelf the shelf actually keeps my grain greenhouse on the ground <laughs> So when I keep all my pots in here, it doesn't blow away in the wind because I didn't build a foundation. I kind of just threw this thing up really quick. And um, now it's here and I can't, you know, I'm not going to rip it down and rebuild it. It was supposed to be a quick cold frame, so to speak, but it turned into a permanent greenhouse. So uh, what else we got here? We got, uh, let's see, let's see. We got zing over here. We're going to regrow that zing. I like the zing variety. That's a real nice variety. Get some really crazy phenos out of that. We got um, ahi, a yuyo, but there's a red, and then there's a um, a white version of it. And so I got the red and the white grown this year. These are all last year's stuff. Here's Guatemala chili tapin. A lot of people like this, and they're requesting me to uh, bring this one back. This, this is already a two-year-old plant, so I'm probably going to bring this in again if, we, if it'll live through another winter. The um, uh, main reason is, is the chili tapines are difficult to start and and they don't produce the first year you really got to keep you got to winter your chiltepines over a year or two and then you start getting good production but they don't like to general up north anyway they don't like to um what do you call it they don't like to um they don't like to flower and fruit really their first year they, they need like a year or two and then they really start going in this hyper fruiting state so you can see there's quite a few coming on here uh, this is a really great variety. This is not the same as the Max Ike that I'm growing. The Max Ike that I'm growing, they both come from Guatemala. The Guatemala Chili de Pina and the Max Ike, they both come from that country in general. Uh, this is just a different variety of Chili de Pina or, you know, Chili Pekin, if you want to use that term. Uh, we got Purple Beauty, which I don't think that's correct. I don't remember what that... I think I got mislabeled. Numbers are in there. Here's a bunch of mutant varieties that we got growing. I got some here that are my own crosses, but I'm not sure if they're ex really exhibiting anything special on them. So I'm not quite sure um, what to expect. But I do have a couple in here that are mine, like this one, for example. HR14776. That's one of mine. I, I don't have what it's crossed over with here. It's all written down on the inside. But you can see it's a nice purple flower variety. And this this um, this variety gets very stout. And I crossed it from with a xenon, xenon to something else. So I don't remember what it what it was crossed with. But I have I have about three or four of mine that took. And uh, they're doing pretty good. And we'll see how they come out. And if they they look like they're a pretty interesting variety. Maybe I'll offer them. But again, they're not stable, but they're they're good for you to, you know, plant them out and then, you know, see what comes out of it and just uh, isolate those strains. But I usually like to get my stuff out, even if it is an F1 or an F2. I like to get that stuff out because sometimes I don't pursue it and I'd rather you guys take it from there and do whatever you want with it. Uh, let's see here. Just got a, a number of other, um, you know, tomato plants. Now, these tomato plants were all dying at one time. And um, I brought them in because the rain basically destroyed everything tomato this year. It was an absolute disaster. And as a result of that, I brought these in here. And as you can see, they're growing great. They're starting to flower. They're fruiting. And they were all blighted to the bottom. They were rotted and blighted out. And now look at them. They're all growing in this up. So, yeah, that's a big thing. You got to keep your tomatoes out of the rain. Uh, that's uh, Solanum maritinum right here. Salina Maritim. It's a wild variety. It's weird, and I'm growing it. So, what else we got here? We got, um, we started Capsicum Fluctuosum again. That's the regular yellow flower. I believe my variety that I've been growing and selling for years is a, I didn't realize it was a green flowered and a red flowered. I knew there was a red flowered. I didn't have that, but I didn't know there was a yellow and a green flower. I think mine has always been the yellow flowered version. Uh, I don't have the green flowered yet. I'm working on getting it and growing it, but is proving to be a major challenge uh but we got a um you know a a um 
a volunteer came up in the pot of the Flexuosa on the bottom. So I just pulled it out, repotted it. As you can see, it's doing good. So I'm going to keep a secondary plant in there. The first Flexuosa is getting a little old. I'll show it to you. It's already about seven, maybe eight years old. It's got a lot of years on it. And I don't know if it's going to survive much longer. So we'll we'll have to see. And we just got a number of other plants here. This is... Uh, the, the uh, Texas rice pepper. Now, this is the true form of it. I had gotten some other seed from other people, uh, other vendors, and they gave me um, the seed, or I bought the seed from them, and their seed was already crossed, so it wasn't coming out uh, true form. And as a result of that, um, uh, the, they were coming up a lot larger. This, this was directly picked for me from the Texas rice peppers that grow wild in Texas. So somebody from from Texas actually picked the seed fresh from the, a wild plant and gave me that seed. And that's what this is right here. So we're regrowing it and it's just supposed to be, you can't get any more true form than what you have right here. So uh, that's what that is. We have uh, more, we got more, we got a lot of ricottos we're growing this year. Uh, a lot of these are wintered over from last year because I didn't really get any fruit from it. But some of them I, I had to restart from seed, and I'm bringing them in. Now, one of the things I'm going to work on with ricottos, a lot of this other stuff, I'm not going to bring it in unless it's necessary, because I could just either buy the seed or just regrow it. The ricottos are proving to be a much, much larger problem when it comes to... Um, you know, and it, the, the ricardos are a much bigger problem when it comes to trying to get fruit off them. And they take like a year or two years to really become fruit productive. And so one of the things I'm working on is keeping the ricardo plants generally small for the first couple of years. And just let the plant really mature, get a really woody stem like you see right here. See how I'm, I'm kind of turning it into a bonsai and the stem gets really big and these, these little shoots come off it. They're young. You can cut them off again. I'll get more shoots that will come off. And I'm working on doing this more with these ricotta varieties to keep the plant small but yet productive. I don't need millions of peppers or each variety, just a couple. As you can see, there's plenty of flowers on this. It's just starting to get into that flowering stage with this one now because I've been pruning it. Yeah, there's a little, little bit of yellowing and that's because I keep bringing it in from outdoors to indoors. If it gets aphids on it, I just keep bringing it outdoors to get rid of the aphids. Then when they're gone, then I bring it back in and it starts turning green again. It doesn't want to be in the direct sunlight this year. I don't know why. It's giving me a hard time. That's another. That's a new. There's a new ricotta variety that I'll be offering hopefully this year. It looks like there's a whole bunch of fruit on here. And you can see down there. This thing's got fruits hanging on it already. So yeah, we'll just let those mature. A uh, bunch of other peppers here. Here's my um, uh, capsicum rhomboidium. Rhomboidium. Yellow flowered uh, capsicum. You can see there's tons of flowers on that. The whole thing, the whole, there's flowers all over the place this year on this plant. So this plant is really picking up hardcore this year as far as making flowers. So I'm going to be able to offer plenty of seed. You can see there's some fruits already coming off it. So with the rhomboidium, I'm going to, I'm going to be offering plenty of seed for this, uh, this year. And, um, uh, you'll be able to buy rhomboidium seeds. Now, a lot of people ask me about the cuttings. Um, normally, what I do is, it's a, it's a, this, this, is, this is another plant that's, this one's probably about eight years old, maybe even nine by now. I've had this plant literally forever. I'll show you the base in a minute. But normally, what I do with this plant is, I, you have to prune it at the right time because I don't want to prune it while it's flowering and making fruits like this. I don't want. To, I want to wait until it's done with that, and then it stops flowering, and then at that point, I can start pruning off all the older stems on them, and then I put them in water, I root them, and then I can sell them off. Or I don't even wait to root them. I just cut them, put them in a bag, and I ship them out to people who want to buy the cuttings. They root very easy, guys. If I put roots on them, a lot of times the roots end up dying, the leaves end up dying. It's a pain in the neck to to do that so if i don't root them and i just put it in the bag yeah a few of the leaves might fall off you don't need the leaf on on the cuttings you can take all the leaves off it just put it in the, in the envelope and ship it to you and then put it right in the water in the sunlight you'll see it'll start to grow it, it grows very easy this plant grows like a weed guys so a lot of people are like oh my god there's no leaves on or the leaves fell off the thing inside the envelope and it's you don't need the leaves all you need is the cutting and it'll root like a mother so trust me, I've been doing this. I've been doing that with this plant for many years. Now I'm going to show you the base on this plant. Show you how old. You can see right here. That look at the base on that thing. This thing is so huge. I've had this plant already four feet tall. It was absolutely enormous. I planted it out in the yard over here, and it grew. It, the plant literally grew like a forsythia. 
So if you've ever seen the way forsythias grow, that's what this thing grew. It grew absolutely massive. The fronds got really long, and then they, they draped down to the ground. And where they touched the ground, they started rooting again. So I started getting, like, all these little, re, I don't know what you want to call them. Like, they, the, uh, they rooted themselves. And I basically had to cut all the ends off just for the sake of bringing the plant in. And I left those outside, but they died for the winter. But yeah, that's what this plant does. It gets absolutely, these fronds can get really long and then they touch the ground and they start rooting again, just like for Scythia. Here's something interesting. This is Cap 212. This is a very strange, it's a Kosioensi or Chacoensi variety, but I'm not sure about this one. This one's really strange. Um, it, it's, it makes these uh, longer versions of Chacoensi. Uh, capsicum chocoensi varieties, but they get embroidered. That these little, these little um, pekin peppers get very, very embroidered, and it's really crazy looking. For, it's really crazy looking. So we got a ton in there. There's tons of peppers on that uh, growing. So yeah, hopefully I can get some seed out of it. It seems like it doesn't. It's not a very heavy seed producer. So uh, as a result of that, um, I don't know what to say about it. But I'll offer seeds, whatever seed I do get. Uh, uh, last year, I think I, this is just like a two-year-old plant. So last year I was growing it, had probably maybe about 30 pods on it. And I only got about maybe 10 seeds out of it. They really didn't want to make a lot of seeds. I don't know why. Coast chocoenses really cause a lot of problems in that area. So we'll see what it does. This year it's got, we got probably up 100 peppers are going to come off of this thing. So maybe I can get enough to offer and you can try to grow this thing for yourself. Uh, here's the other Rokapika. As you can see, it's fruiting like absolutely crazy. This one's in the pot, and um, you can see there's fruits on it. Right? You see the fruits? They're all over. This thing's... And I don't know how big these get. I don't know. I've never grown Rokapika before. There's Rokapika and Lokapika, I think. There's a couple different variations of Rokapikas. Uh, this is one variation with the purple flowers. That's most of the one. There's another variety out there that's uh, called something a little different. I'm trying to get seed for that now. It's very rare. It's very hard to get. you got to get somebody who's uh, familiar with it. So, yeah, I do believe there's a loca pica, I think, out there. I'll show you really quick my capsicum cardiancy. Now, this is this is a little different than the cardiancy I'm offering now. Um, the one you see now is the one that's a USDA version. This what you're looking at down here. It's a gigantic bird's nest. And it's loaded with flowers. There's flowers all over this thing. This thing has probably got about 500 flowers on it right now. It's absolutely covered in flowers. However, this particular variety, and I, the person who sold me the seed for it told me specifically that this particular variety of or version of Capsicum cardiancy is a self-incompatible variety. It, it generally, it makes fruit, but not very much. And it's very hard to get seed from this. However, the trade-off is, is this plant gets absolutely enormous. I mean, look at this, look at this, guys. It grows like a weed. It doesn't grow like a, like a regular pepper plant. This thing grows with all these little, it grows like a vine, to be honest with you. I've never seen a, a pepper plant do anything like this. So this is, uh, this is another version of Cardiancy. Hopefully I can get seed and maybe offer it to you guys out there. I don't know if there's a, you know, a PI number to it or a cap number. It just know it as uh, it's it's a different selection of cardiancy than the selections I've grown in the past. This thing doesn't grow like a regular plant. It grows like a tumbleweed. It's a great variety. Again, we'll show you the flowers. The flowers are beautiful on these flowers. They're pure purple. There's no yellowing in there or anything. That's pure, unadulterated, wild. I don't know what country. I think it comes from Brazil. But, yeah, we'll hopefully offer seed from that. Now... Nothing really to see out here. I'm not really going to take you out there. Yeah, we do got the Flexuosum out there. That plant is literally... This plant here is literally like... Um, it's like seven or eight years old. It's almost as old as the uh, Rhomboidium that I just showed you. But you can see it's a little late this year as far as producing fruits because I normally get fruits much earlier in the year, but this particular year... It was a strange year, so I'm not really getting fruits early, but as you can see, it's starting to load up with peppers on it now. So I'm going to get quite a few uh, pods, so we'll have that seed back in stock. It's all going to be fresh seed. I might just dry a lot of it out in berry and sell people the raisin berry or the raisin, flexuosum raisins with the seed in it. That way, you know, you can 
you can taste the dried berries. Um, you'll have the option, maybe I'll do that. I, I no guarantees I'm going to do that with it. But uh, yeah, it's an old plant. You can see over here uh, some of the stems coming up. Something, uh, something I learned recently about Flexiosum, I repotted this recently. And right after I repotted it, some, it did something really strange, which I never seen uh, it do before. And so when I did that and I repotted it and I moved the roots around, it started throwing up all these suckers inside that pot. I didn't know they were suckers, so I started pulling them out. I thought they were like, you know, the berries ripe, and I didn't get them all. Sometimes they fall inside the pot, and I thought they were just sprouts. I was going to move them into separate pots. Well, it turns out that this thing actually starts putting up suckers from deep inside that pot. These suckers were going down probably six, seven inches from the bottom, and I was pulling them up, and I was breaking them off. I was like, oh, I didn't realize that's what it was. So yeah, Flexuosum will actually uh, start throwing up a ton of suckers if you were to cut the top part of that plant off. It won't die. It'll just put out millions of other suckers. That's basically how this plant works. So that's a recent thing that I just recently learned. Cap 500 over here. We got a number of other ricottos. Again, I might be offering the, um, this, is, uh, this is the olive ricotto. And so I might be offering the olive ricottos uh, fresh as an option. I'm not sure how much I charge for those. I might charge like maybe three dollars a pepper, or maybe three or three fifty or four. But I'm mainly selling it for the seed, not really to eat. But if you want, and you want the fresh pepper with it, maybe I'll give you the option. You could buy that. Uh, if you want a different shipping option too with this, if you want to go with a box, and so I might have to charge a dollar or two more for the fresh peppers. But uh, we're going to get quite a few of uh, these olive ricottos. Got about four plants growing. I'll show you some of the others. They're absolutely loaded. Uh, here's my here's my um, my uh, Russian kales. I love Russian kale. I like eating it raw, but it's also really good cooked. Got some uh, southern collards. I think Georgia southern collards right here. Italian sweet basil. Here's here's uh, here's uh, cardiancy again, but this is the USDA version of it. And this this version is similar to the other one. I think this is USDA, isn't it? Yeah, this is a USDA version right here. And it's similar to the other one, but the flowers are a little different. And as you can see, these flowers get a little more purple, and they're a little bit bigger. They're not quite it. The other ones stay like a light purple. And so this is the USDA version. Yeah, it's kind of wiry like that right now because I had to cut it down a couple of times. As a result, it's getting up wiry. But yeah, generally with this one, it'll put one big frond up the middle, and it'll become like a pepper plant, you know, like a regular pepper plant. Uh, we got some fire. I think they're called fire um, lantern uh Lanterns, it's a, it's a type of uh, ground cherry, but it's like a orange or red color. So hopefully that'll fruit this year. Uh, and let's bring it in a garden really quick. We also got these too. Groovy tunes. You're gonna love those. Those these are great guys. These are, these are a dwarf variety, but man, they're really cool looking for you tomato people out there. Um, we got puma over there. We got more. In the back over there, those are the ricotta olives. This, this thing's, once these things start producing, forget about it. You can't even keep up with them. So we got ricotta olives ready, getting ready to pump out a ton of them. Uh, we got erotica over there. These A lot of these are last year's plants. We are not bringing these back in again. We're just, whatever we get this year, we get. I got to end it because I have a lot of other stuff going on this year. Uh, this is called uh, um, Purple Bleeder. That's what it was called, I believe. Uh, there's a gentleman who goes with a, um, he, he goes by a, uh, can't remember his name. Uh, he says he's the one who created all these, uh, bleeding calyxes and stuff. But some of these, look at the, look at the gorgeous look on that pepper. I might do a pod review for you guys at the end. Right here, this big red thing is called Red Orch. I have seed available. I'm going to, I got to make a web page for it and I'm going to make it available. It's a gorgeous plant. It's in the, um. Lamb's Quarter family, but this is a red version, and it's very weird looking. But it is an absolutely gorgeous plant. Yes, the leaves are edible. They're great. They're, they go great in salads. You, you can cook the leaves as well. And I believe you can eat the seed pods, too, when they're young. Uh, you can actually eat them. It's almost like eating lentils, if you will. But, yeah, that's Red Orch. I'll have seed for that later in the year. Um, that just came up wild, so I let it grow. I didn't plant it there. It just... I just left it and let it grow. This is another weird thing. I don't know what this is. Look at this, guys. What the heck is this thing? 
it it came up wild one year and I plant it, it it wintered over and I just put it out of here to get it out of the way and I left it and here it is. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's a pussy toe I think it's called or a larger version of pussy toe. I don't know. It's weird though. So whatever that is, if you guys could tell me, that's great. If not, I'll offer seed to it for somebody who wants it. Got more uh, strawberry spinach. She's come up wild now around here. So I end up with tons of strawberry spinach all over the place, and I do eat it. The leaves are edible, and the berries are edible. we got tons of plants here. I'm not going to go over every variety. We'll just point out a couple uh, that might be of interest. I can't remember which variety that is. Uh, Sereno Tampiqua. It's a nice uh, Sereno variety. Okay, this is the Max Ike. I like this I like this version of wild pepper. It's very cool. It's not a tapine, but a more of a pukin. So you can see it makes these nice little uh, pods on it. It comes from Guatemala, but I got it from somebody who was in Mexico. I don't know how they got it, but they re they told me it was called Max Ike. And um, this is not the same thing as the Guatemala chili tapine that I showed you in there. That one grows much differently. As you can see, this is more of an upright variety. The Guatemala chili tapine kind of wants to hang down. Uh, put, that, that, that one wants to kind of, you know, point down. It's more of a down type variety, which is not common for a Pekin or Chiltepin to do that. But that one's, that's what that one does. This one here is an upright variety, as you can see. And it's a very nice uh, alternative to a lot of the other Chiltepins that are out there if you want to grow something different. Again, it's called Max Ike. We do offer seed for it. Uh, Cabincho. Cabincho is Casigam Exile. This is a nice one. I got a very big plant I'm going to show you right there. That's Cabincho. That thing's already like two or three years old. And uh, we'll, we will be bringing in the big one for next year because uh, I want to keep that thing going. I want to do some experiments with it. Uh, this is called Cascom Exile. It's really a subversion of Chacuense, if you want to use that term. It's, it's, I don't know why they decided to call it Capsicum Exile, but that's what it's called. But it's not technically another species. I don't know. It's a weird story behind it. And this is it. This one, these fruits can get anywhere between... Um, you know, a half inch long to even as big as an inch, maybe even an inch and a quarter. It can get quite long on these plants. And so you can see it's got beautiful, beautiful pods in here. But I have a, I have, I have a bigger plant I'll show you over there. Uh, let's see over here. This is for you wild people. This is also interesting here. Um, this is called uh, a black chiltepine. And so I'm waiting for this to get... I'm going to take pictures later too, but I'm waiting for this one to get nice and red berries on it. And it looks really cool when it's red berries and it's all black. But this is just a chiltepine and it's a black version of it. I don't know anything about it. I just know that that's it. And it's sometimes referred to as Lil Black. I guess that's who named it, Lil, uh, an Asian person. I don't know where they got the seed from, but that's what that is. That's a black chiltepine and uh, they're gorgeous, gorgeous little pods that come off of there very very nice and that's what that is we got the japones right here i decided to regrow this again uh these plants can absolutely produce an, an unbelievable amount of peppers off that's why it's a very popular variety uh to grow for hot peppers and you know hot pepper powders and crushed peppers this is one of the ones uh that they use to make that and it produces a ton and ton of pods but we're regrowing it this year just need fresh seed for it uh, we got some Russian varieties of peppers here this year. I, I don't know the names of them offhand. This one may have gotten, this one might be here a little too long. Yeah, I got a little bit of Blossom Enra. I left it on a little too long. But this is, I got a bunch of Russian varieties here. And um, I just got to remember to, <laughs> uh, I got to remember to get this one. I got to come back for that because I got to get the seed out of that. But yeah, if you, you can see there's a nice big, you can see there's a nice big version. These peppers can get absolutely enormous. Uh, I don't know what this is called. This is called whatever that is, a Russian variety. A lot of people like the Russian uh, stuff that's come from Russia. They got some great hybrids out there, really cool stuff. As you can see, you know, you're getting some really good, uh, nice peppers out of them. Uh, what else we got here? Uh, he Cyrell. This has been out of stock for about a year. Or, well, not totally out of stock, but it's been out for a while. So here's Ahi uh, Cyrell. A very popular variety. A lot of people want that variety. I'm not 100% sure as to why, but uh, a lot of people, if when it goes out of stock, I get a lot of back and stock requests for this, spe this specific variety of uh, pepper. So yeah, Ahi Cyrell. 
Uh, and yeah, that's the true, this is the true pheno for this too. This isn't just like any old bullshit type of uh, pheno. This is the actual thing. You can see the calyx on it. Uh, that's the best way to identify. It's got this uh, cup type of calyx. And that's the original seed that I got from from an original vendor. A lot of people offering that particular variety now uh, is not the correct pheno, unfortunately. I don't know what they're offering, but this one's the, this one's the actual correct pheno for Ahi Cyrell. Uh, this is Cap 867, I think. This is a Ricardo version, but it's an orange Ricardo. It's a little different than your Manzano orange. It's kind of it, it's. I, we'll have to we'll review it at the end of the year. It, it's it's just getting flowering now i don't see any fruit set on it hopefully it'll fruit set um but um it, it, it's a it's a little bit different and it's a little bit more uh smaller than your manzanos type of um ricardos we got uh calico we got bohemian baron a lot of people like that bohemian baron so yeah we're really excited about growing that one uh i think that's bohemian baron too right yeah, you can see the beautiful pods on the, these make these absolutely unbelievable purple peppers. That's called Bohemian Baron. Uh, they make beautiful purple peppers on there, uh, unlike any other pepper I've ever seen. Um, this is called the um, Purple Reaper, but the Reapers aren't really coming out with tails this year. They're just kind of making these long, weird shapes on it. But last year, uh, this is the same plant, so I went to the plant over from last year. Uh, I got a couple pods that came off, and it made pods with tails on it so i don't know why it's not making tails this year i don't know if that's a trait thing or what Kabaka peach this is a weird one you're gonna like that uh i do offer seed online for it i'm not sure if i'm out of seed for this and you can see it's really weird looking so yeah we got Kabaka peach uh, i think that's the same as the Co uh Kabaka roxa but this is a peach version I i'm not sure where that originated from but i am growing it and we will have seed for it again this year. Um, I'm not sure what this is. Uh, this bed here, just so you guys know, like generally with, what I do with these beds here is I take all my older seed and I just dump it all in the top of this thing and I just rake it all over and whatever grows, grows. And sometimes it, crazy stuff comes up. Sometimes it's just atypical, you know. We got some, we got some celery growing in there. Um, I just throw all my stuff in there. And... Um, Hopefully the birds and the animals don't eat it, and if they don't eat it, I get I get some really crazy stuff that comes up, and uh, I just get rid of it. Now, I'll take you over here. I, I'm letting some of this stuff go a little bit on the fallow side here. Uh, let's see here. We got we got over here. We got um, uh, decosina, right? Crayola decosina, right there. We also have in the back here this thing. I think I showed you this on another video. Uh, this is called Lily of the Valley. I don't remember the species name of it, but it makes these unbelievably weird type of flowers, right? And they call it Lily of the Valley. Now, I planted it one time. The problem with this plant is, is, is the root system doesn't die. It winters. So I planted it, and I, I thought I uprooted it and got rid of everything, but now it's coming back up. But I never pursued it, so I never kept any seed. And it makes a ton of flowers, but I didn't get any fruit off of it. So maybe this year it'll fruit, and I'll offer you some seed for it. Uh, it's a crazy plant. It's really huge. It's not really edible. It's just more of an ornamental thing. But some people say you can't eat the fruit from it. Um, so if you don't know what lily of the valley is go look it up online you can look in google images you'll see what those look like no uh, nothing special here these are last chaka we got pi numbers growing here this is all like this all these plants are from last year so we wintered them but i'm not going to be wintering uh again this year whatever is done is done yeah you can winter these over and every year they'll produce more and more fruit uh, but it's just too strenuous for me because I have so many other things that I have to uh, grow this year indoors in winter. I can't bring all this in. Uh, BTR Butch Tea Reaper right here. Uh, that's what this is. Uh, no, no, I apologize. No, that's not a BTR. This is the Beast. It's called the Beast. Uh, I grew it last year. It didn't fruit. It didn't flower or fruit. So we wintered it and we brought it out this year. We planted it and now there's, there's flowers all over it. You just can't see them because they're still small. But yeah, it's, it's in the flowering stage. We are roughly still in the first week of, um, of August. So the good news with that is, is I have time for this plant to um, 
uh, produce fruit by the end of the year. And if it doesn't, I could always dig it up and bring in a greenhouse. This is one that uh, I will dig up and bring in as big as it is. Uh, the reason why is that this is a very rare plant. Uh, it comes from uh, Iran. It's called Tarani, and it's a frutescent variety. It's the only frutescence I know that literally makes pods that can get six inches long. You can see how big these pods get. Again, it is frutescence. I'll show you the flowers, or if I can find one. No. Okay. Capsicum frutescence. And um, these are the pods that come off it. They're just, you can see it makes these really strange, really weird looking pods. It's just, it, they're very thin walled and they got a really strange, unique type of flavor to them. I've never seen anything quite like it, but it comes from Tehran in Iran. And it's the only super large variety of uh, frutescence I know of. I don't know of any frutescent varieties that make very large peppers. All the frutescents that I know of make very small, uh, they make very small peppers. They're always like bird peppers. This is the only one I know that makes these enormous peppers. These things can get as big as six inches and they get really long. And, uh, but they take forever to ripen, guys. That's the problem with this variety. It doesn't start ripening until end of September and October. And usually by that time, you're getting your first frost warnings and now you got to dig it up and that messes it up. So yeah, that's it. We're growing it and we're going to winter it and uh, we're going to keep this plant going for several years. They're very rare, kind of hard to start from seed, but if you could get this started from seed, which we do offer seed for, but if you could get it started, keep it growing. Don't, don't let it die out. We got Bodhi right here. That's your regular, typical, atypical Bodhi. That's the red one. There is a yellow one. I am working on getting seed for that. And what else we got here? We just got a number of other things. We got Purple Marconi. We're growing again. Um, I had seed to it, but it was very old. So I did manage, I believe, to get a seed started from that Purple Marconi. As you can see, it's nice beautiful pod coming in. It's not a very highly productive variety, but you got to leave those purple ones on until they literally turn red. And if you pick them early, those seeds are no good. So yeah, we're working on those. Just a number of other things. You got more uh, uh, capsicum predomisiums right there. Uh, what's this one here? This is ahi um, charpita, but the red version. So we wintered it and we should get a ton of red uh, charpitas off of that. I got to check my regular Charpita varieties. I'm out, I think, of Charpita. I may actually have to actually order Charpita again and then grow it from seed again. Uh, so I may have to do that. Uh, what is that here? Uh, this is Chilatapine Tuxan, and uh, they ain't doing too good. It's really bare. I'm not sure what's wrong with it, but... I don't know. I might get a few pods off of that. I'm not going to replenish stock with it. I'm just going to have to regrow it next year. And this is Capsicum Exile, also known as Cabincho. Now, this is a little bit different than the other uh, Cabincho that I got because I got them from two different sources. This one here is the true version. Uh, I actually got this from somebody who is from South America. I believe South or Central America. I don't remember who I where I got it. But this is a true version of Capsicum Exile or Cabincho, if you will. And um, this plant takes a couple of years to grow, and you really need to build a canopy up on it like this. And uh, once you get this canopy built up, as you can see, it's flowering like absolutely unbelievably crazy. It's loaded with peppers. They're just not big yet. But the peppers on this particular strain of Cabincho, they normally don't get too much bigger than what you see generally right here. So this version of Capsicum Exile generally stays a little small, smaller. That version of Capsicum Exile that I showed you over there is a larger version. So I offer seed to both of those. One's called Capsicum Exile Large, and this is the traditional Cabincho or uh, Capsicum Exile here. And there's a number of other smaller plants below. But yeah, this is a this is a great variety to grow. It's very productive, but it takes about two to three years of this plant maturing and building a giant canopy like you see here in order to really get the, the plant to start becoming fruit happy, right? So that's what that is right here. It's a great plant. We'll, we'll be wintering that one as well. Very hard to, to start this from seed. And it's also difficult to get this variety where it's true form like this. So uh, we're going to keep this one for a few years. Uh, Queen Larry, uh, not here. Okay, so this is uh, Quintisso. Uh, 
It's called Quintisso Bacatum. Now, there's there's a couple versions of Quintisso. Uh, there's a, uh, I believe there's a Chinensi version. There's an Anum version. And here's a, this is a, um, this is a Bacatum version. And this one gets like a, they make the fruits, like the berries on it. They turn like a tan color. So they're really, really um, cool. And they're very soft. I, I'm going to do a pod review on this one again next year. I don't know if I did one last year or whatnot, but... Uh, it's a very nice variety. I really like this um, this version of uh, Quintisso, and um, I really like it a lot, even more than the yellow version of it, that, which is much more like a marble. I really like this version uh, um, even more than that one. And uh, yes, I did get that from somebody from Brazil. Not the guys that I deal with from Brazil. These totally different people uh, that I refer to, right? So I got it from them. Uh, they're not, I, I believe I, he was on uh, either Etsy or eBay that I got it from. He's no longer on those platforms, so, or he doesn't sell to the United States anymore. But that's how I met that guy originally. And I also got him to get me uh, a few other things that was pretty cool, too. Uh, this is called uh, um, Leviathan Gnarly. You can see it makes these absolutely crazy-looking gnarly pods on it. Absolutely, and they're nice, they turn nice and brown. Maybe I'll do a pod review on these later this year. You can see it's really loaded with these pods. This, this is a very, very highly productive variety of super hot. So if you're looking to grow something new and you haven't grown the um, the uh, the gnarly, the, the Leviathan's gnarly, so there's, there's several variations. There's a Leviathan gnarly, and there's a Leviathan gnarly chocolate, and the Leviathan gnarly red. There's a bunch of a bunch of them out there. The Leviathan gnarly super long, and there's all these different variations. Uh, this one here is specifically called the just the Leviathan gnarly scorpion. It's the original version of it, and um, that's the one I'm just going to stick with that because the, all the other versions are great. It's just they start getting too complicated to maintain all them varieties. I just want to maintain the original varieties uh, on a lot of stuff I grow. Uh, just some other stuff. Uh, Odham. Um, o Odenham from the Ob Odenham Reservations in, I believe, uh, Arizona is where this chilipine come from. That's what this is. Not doing too good this year. It's kind of yellowing up. So we'll maybe grow that next year from seed again. I'm not going to bring that in. I don't know. It's It didn't take well this year. A lot of plants didn't take well. This giant massive thing you're looking at here, this is called um, Ricardo di Seta. And this thing produces absolutely unbelievable amounts of, of ricotto. So if you're if you're a person who likes ricottos and you want to grow a variety that's really, really, really productive, the um, ricotto di seta, di seta uh, is an absolutely wonderful variety to grow. It when it's when this thing starts making peppers right now, it's had a lot of flower drops, but when it's actually ready to start making peppers, oh my gosh, you'll see this thing will be completely loaded. It'll look like an apple tree loaded with apples. It's unbelievable. I got two plants growing here. I don't know if I'm going to bring that in. I'll show you the size of the plant. You can see it's absolutely enormous. That's probably about an inch, maybe about an inch and a quarter at the base. And this plant's already like two or three years old. You can see there's some ricados on here now. You know, it's just, it's just getting started. Okay. Believe me when I tell you, when this thing starts to produce fruit, it's going to look like an apple tree. Unbelievable amounts of, of fruit. It's a, one of the best producing ricottos I think I've ever grown in my life. But it really went through a hardship this year with the heat we had and all this rain. It really messed it up. But um, if I have to, I'll dig it up, pot it, and then keep it in the greenhouse until all the fruit ripen up. If I have to do that. Because uh, around here, the frost can come in late and early. You don't know what's going on. Uh, what do we got here? Anything special? Oh, this is uh, Akabar Cassini. This is a um, Middle Eastern variety of pepper. They're very popular. A lot of people really, really like the Akabar Cassini. So it looks like I'm going to get quite a few fruits off of this thing this year. And it's already, like I told you, all these plants have been wintered over. So this is like last year's plant. But usually on the second year, I get an absolutely ton of, of fruit off it. So maybe I'll offer some fresh fruits uh, for sale on this one. I got plenty of seed on it. I don't need the seed anymore. But maybe I'll offer some fresh fruits on it, and uh, we can we can work something out and uh, make them available. Akbar Cassini. It's a little. It's like a little cherry pepper. Makes these peppers about that size, as you can see right there. And uh, just they're a great, great salad pickling pepper, a salad pepper. I really like them. Grilling. It's throw them on a grill. Let them cook up a little bit, and then eat them. They soften them up a bit. 
Um, this right here is called Defco. That's last year's plant. We ain't going to be bringing that in again, but it's a really great variety. It makes some really... Nobody really... Did, no, everybody's afraid to try that variety for some reason. I like it. I think it's a great variety. Uh, this right here is a nasty little sucker, but I let it grow anyway. Some people actually like the seed to that, so we do offer seed. I don't remember what this is. Um... Oh, this is purple flowered bacanum. I'm actually out of stock on that. But this is last year's plant, and this year you can see it's it's absolutely loading up with pods this year. There's, there's freaking pods all over this thing. So this is a per is what it is. It's a bacanum. Let's see if there's a flower, but it makes purple flowers. Sometimes those flowers can get very very purple. Sometimes it's very light. At the same, I've noticed this effect on the same plant. So. Don't be like, oh, it's not purple enough for me. And then, you know, one stem has got really purple flowers and the next one's their light. So it's just a weird effect that that plant gets. Uh, I don't know what this is. What is that? I don't remember. Oh, this is the hornet. It's called hornet. There's a couple varieties. Sometimes they get really big tails on them. We'll have to see at the end of the year. What comes off of these? It's it, this. This is last year's plant. Made really nice phenos last year. It's the same plant. It's not. It's not making the same kind of phenos. It has nothing to do with crossing or any of that. It's just the same plant, guys. It's a two-year-old plant. Sometimes they produce tails. Sometimes they don't. It's really an effect of the, the weather. Takasunami. It's a wild variety. I mean, uh, yeah, wild. Pekin, I guess, a Pekin type variety. Got, got some more Russian varieties here. These are very popular. I'll show you that on the other side. I'm not sure what this is. Oh, Leslie. Yeah, it's not special. It's a weird one, but... Yeah, these are Russian varieties. You get some nice sweet pepper. Russian sweet peppers are really good. I like I like these a lot. Now, you got to be careful when you're buying seed from Russia because oftentimes that seed that you get from Russia is really... It's the quality control of, of their seed is really low. Meaning you're getting a mixed bag of all kinds of stuff. It almost never the same thing. So you have to look up the you have to look up the variety, and then you got to look up images of what that variety is supposed to look like, and then grow ten plants, and then one of those plants will be the correct variety. But unfortunately, that's the way that seed is when you're buying seed from Russia or Ukraine or any of those areas out there. There's the quality control is horrible. That's why you're only paying fifty cents a variety or a dollar variety. That's that's why it's so cheap. It's just they don't put any effort into the quality control. That right here is called the, um, oh, I can't remember. It's a radish. Uh, it's called something. You can see the size of these radishes. See that radish? That thing's probably about a foot long into the ground. It's not a, it's not a horse radish. It's called, um, oh, I can't remember the name of it. I can't remember. It's a big radish. I sell them on my on my website. Most people grow this particular variety of radish mostly for sprouting, for sprouts because they eat the sprouts. That's what this variety is mostly for. It's not to get these gigantic um, radishes off of there, though you can make a good hot sauce out of that, like a radish sauce. But that's not what, what they grow it for. They mostly grow it because they eat the sprouts, and that's what this variety is. So I, I'm trying to get back more into the sprouts. This is you know, this is just a volunteer that came up. I let it grow, but I need seed from it, and um, we'll save the seed from it this year. So that's a good variety. Can't remember the name of it. This, I can't remember a lot of them. I'm not going to bend down on everyone. Here, this is one that everybody's been asking me for. This is called Cap 501. This is also a um, Cosioense variety. And I originally got this seed from um, Pepper Lovers. So the problem with this variety, unfortunately, is that it doesn't really like to, um, it produces fruit, but it doesn't really like to make seed. So it'll make, it'll make what I refer to as runts. And what that means is it, it makes fruit with seed, with no seed in it. So that's what you're ending up with on, on this particular variety is a lot of runs. So I'm going to have to bring this in again next year. I don't know if there's going to be any seed in these uh, varieties, but this is Cap 501. And um, I'll show you the flowers. Cosio Enzi, as you can see. And so, yeah, that's, that's what that is. I don't know what else to tell you. Uh, Ahi Fantasy. 
Got a number of other things. I just stuck these out here. A lot, a lot of them didn't get too much bigger uh, than than what it was when I brought them out here. This is these are volunteers that came up. This is from the uh, the mini the mini white cucumbers, and they make all these little little mini white cucumbers. But if you leave them on a plant, they'll eventually turn into this. This is what they turn into. But if if you if you grow them, like these are getting ready to die, but. If, they're, they'll be nice and white when they come out. Man, they're delicious. I eat those things like crazy. That giant thing right there is called Ahi Norteno. Let's see if I can get you around the other side. I don't really walk around in here because of these plants too much, if I don't need to. Ahi Norteno. This, is, uh, this plant, when I brought it in, was like 7 foot tall. And it's still absolutely enormous. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to bring it in this year. we got so many pods off this, I'm probably going to let it go makes these wonderful beautiful like gigantic pods on here it's very slow growing this plant you need when you start it from seed you really need to let it winter over in order to um really get pods off it it's a, a two-year grow on that particular variety i i had i haven't had luck with it for about several years until i wintered it and that's what i did here and as you can see this thing is absolutely loaded with pods so i don't know if i'm going to bring it in again this year what is this here? I have no idea what this is here. Looks like Ahi Cyrell, that one. Uh, but I lost the tag to that one. Probably put that in the mix seed. Got a Paradixum something over there, the yellow version. This is a Ahi Ayuyo. We'll do a pod review for you on the Ahi Ayuyo. Okay, we'll do a quick one at the end. This is the... Uh, the purple version i showed you the red version inside this is the purple version we'll do a pod review on the red version as you can see as you can see it gets nice uh coloring and spotting on it, it gets really really nice nothing too special here uh just nothing nothing i don't want to waste your time on that gotta end this video guys it's getting too long new zealand spinach we got an absolute ton of this i love to eat new zealand spinach i love this stuff i pick this stuff all the time i eat it with the bugs and everything mm -mm. spit those little worms out of there last but not least I'll just show you a couple um plants that i got here um wary wary now there's two versions of the wary wary there's a whole story about Wary Wary. It originates from Suriname, but some of these ver versions of Wary Wary that are out there are not the correct phenos. Um, from what I've read about it, native uh, Suriname people, uh, are they, they know about the original Wary Wary, which grows like a tapine. And these grow like tapines, but they get much larger. And these, this particular variety actually originates from some of the islands in the, um, the um, Caribbean. So... Uh, there is a natural wild version. It's very rare to come across a seed, but I do know somebody I've been in talks with that is going to hopefully eventually get me some of this, the original true version of Wary Wary, rather than this version here. This this version here, I think uh, it actually originated from Africa and it ended up into the into the West Indies somewhere, and then that they, they use it as a substitute because the other wary wary is too hard to grow and get fruit off it, and so they they substitute it with this, and then they ended up calling this the wary wary. So it's very hard to get the original version of wary wary. I am working on it, and when I get it, I will make it available, the true version. Uh, this version grows a little weird. It kind of grows more or less like this one here, which is um, doesn't it doesn't it, it's not just that's a that's a, an anum, I believe, and this is a bacatum, but the fruits on that look almost identical to this. This is uh, Ahi Tapatuluca. Tapatuluca. That's what this is. It's a, it's a bacatum variety, and the fruits are kind of a flattened, little slightly larger sized of a wild fruit, and that's kind of what that looks like, except that is not a bacatum. This is. It's not the same plant. It's totally different. Um, this is a wild bacadam variety, but the, but the, the wary rarities that come off of that plant look very similar to this. Uh, the original true version of wary wary uh, is more of like a tapine that looks like a regular tapine pepper, you know, like something like this. The true the true version of wary wary should look like that. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna buy any of that seed until I deal with certain people who actually know what I'm talking about from Suriname that will get me seed.
This is variegated Peking. Uh, it's a beautiful plant. You can see there's uh, it makes these variegated peppers. And these peppers could get like, well, not an inch per se, but they could get longer than what you see here. Maybe almost double in size. Uh, it's a very... It, it, it's a very beautiful variety. It doesn't fruit heavily, though. It makes a lot of flowers, but it doesn't fruit heavily. There was probably a thousand flowers on this plant at one time. And, and there's still flowers. You can't see them because the flowers blend right into the plant. But there's tons of flowers on it. But there were even more than that on here. And you can barely see any fruits on here. There's some fruits on this, on, on this variety. This is a variegated Pekin. And it's a downright variety. It's not an upright variety. It comes from, I believe, Brazil. Again, it's a Brazilian variety. And um, no, it didn't come from any of, the, any of those guys. It just is, these are other people I know, guys. I know, it's, I know a lot of people around the world. This, is, this came from somebody else. And um, it's not those guys. And so this variety here is uh, it's very unique. And it's, it's a gorgeous variety. And you can see I got a number of plants. And uh, we should get plenty of fruit off of this this year. Maybe I'll offer whole fruit for it. And, um, you know, we'll see how that goes. Last but not least, we'll just show you one or two things in here. Uh, this is the Guatemala Chile de Pin, Right? No, <laughs> not Guatemala Chile de Pin. This is the uh, um, uh, Guatemala Orange Ricardo. That's what this is. Now, you can see it's, it's kind of suffering right now because I transplanted it, and it didn't like what I transplanted it into. And I, I don't want to upset the root system again. It's just going to have to stabilize. Maybe it's too alkali. Too, it just doesn't like what it is. And maybe it was just getting too much rain. And as a result of that, it just started, all the leaves started burning off. Yeah, that's pepper blight. No, it's not. It's something wrong with the soil. It's too moist. I'm just going to let the plant completely dry out and uh, let it reroot itself. And hopefully it doesn't die. There are a few fruits on this. I may have to start this one over from seed again. It's not a disease. This is these there's burning of the leaves when you see this. This is a moisture problem in the pot. It's got it's just too much moisture. It's not pep this ain't even pepper blight. And this is something else. You can see the yellowing of the leaves and everything. It's not pepper blight. This particular problem here is something to do with the moisture inside the pot and the plant doesn't like it. Could be the pH. I'm not hundred percent sure. We're gonna let we're gonna let this thing uh, stabilize. We're gonna keep the water off it. And uh, let it let that pot dry out, and then hopefully it'll reroot itself. And the few peppers that I do have on here, hopefully they'll they'll mature, and I can get seed on it. So if I have to, I can regrow. It's very hard to get seed for the uh, Guatemalan orange ricotta. You can see there's a few there's a few fruits on it. There's not many, but hopefully I can get at least one or two fruits off it, so I can restart it from seed. I don't have any more seed for it. This plant is already uh, it's like one or two years old. You see it's see a very large uh, stem system down there very very large uh, what else we got here uh, for you pe for you tomato people this is the uh, uh, Galapagos minor type one hairy version of the minor version so you got the majors and the minors you got you got cheese manis and you got Galapagoenses this is a Galapagoense it's not a cheese manny and um, this is the original seed and I still had some seed left for it so it, uh, one of my versions last year crossed and a, a ton of bizarre things came out of it. But this is, uh, this is the original version of it. It's not crossed. Uh, they make very, very tiny berries. Um, and um, it's just very hard. You can't get seed for this anywhere. So I've still got lucky. Still got a plant growing. I had to bring it in from outside because the rain was literally killing everything. It almost killed this plant too. I don't have, it, it's a late, late season fruiter. There's no flowers on it. And um, it doesn't like the fruit until late, late, late in the season. And that really sucks because uh, this version, this variety of, of tomato is very, very difficult uh, to get fruits off it. So I get a few berries off it and I might offer seeds. But seeds are very almost microscopic. Uh, we got a nice, we got the big white cucumbers here. This is called the Persian whites. We got a number of these on here. I'm going to leave this on here all the way to the point. I don't know if these eventually turn yellow or not. But that's all that's really growing in here this year is pretty much all the um, the Persian whites. And we're going to leave those on there for full maturity. Really like this white variety out of all the other uh, variety white cucumbers. This one's like the whitest i ever seen it. And it's beautiful. They make these absolutely enormous size. Look at the size of this um, cucumber on here. It's absolutely enormous. It looks like it's ready, but I want to wait until it starts changing some color so I know that the seeds are fully developed. Uh, anything else here? 
worth looking at. As you can see here, this is uh, called Groovy Tunes. It's, like, it's considered to be a microdwarf. They get a little bigger. If I had these get as big as 20 inches tall. If you grow them in pots and you take care of it, these can get quite tall. It's one of the slowest growing tomato varieties I think I've ever seen. It literally takes like months upon months just for the plant to get this big. But if you leave it around long enough, it'll actually get quite tall. So I don't necessarily consider it a microdwarf, but it's not necessarily a dwarf either. I, I don't know what to call it. But a lot of people are selling it as a microdwarf. I wouldn't call it a microdwarf. It, it, these plants could get very large. The only reason why uh, they're selling as microdwarfs is because it, they they take so long to get. Even this size here took about three months just to get this big. But if you leave this for another two months and as the season goes on, this plant will literally go up another two, three feet. It, it, this thing gets really, really tall. So it can, it not really tall, but it can get like two feet, three feet by the end of a season. If you winter it over, it'll probably go all the way to about three feet tall, maybe even four feet. So I would call it more or less a dwarf, not really a micro dwarf. You can see the leaves are absolutely enormous on here. This isn't micro dwarf. This isn't the, the this is not micro dwarf um, uh, uh, classification. I'll show you micro dwarfs. The micro dwarf varieties, the, the leaves generally don't get too much bigger than say, um, I'm out of microdwarfs. They ended early this year. But they generally don't get too much bigger than what you see here, you know. Uh, even this is too big. And a lot of people call out a microdwarf. I generally really don't. This is tiny totem. It's in that microdwarf classification. But I, I generally don't personally like to call these microdwarfs. Well, everybody else calls them that. Um, but the, the leaves on the microdwarfs generally stay really small. Though These leaves are absolutely enormous. These are more of a dwarf variety. So you can see it has a, ragu a little bit of a ragoose uh, effect to it. Uh, it's a d dwarf, not a microdwarf, but whatever. That's what everybody's calling it, is microdwarf. And again, that's my New Zealand spinach. I got a number of varieties in there. This is a wild variety. I forgot what this is. This comes, this comes from Central America. Somebody sent me seed to that. Um, El Salvador, maybe? I, I don't remember. That one, that one right there is, I, I can't wait to do a pod review on it. And that's generally about it, guys. So what we're going to do is I'm going to turn you around, and we're going to do a quick pod review on that. And um, we'll give the Ahi Ayayo Purple, right? And I showed you over here, I have the red version. So when, when you buy, most vendors, when you buy seed for Ahi Ayayo, um, most vendors combine the red and the purple together. They just leave it that way. Why is it that way? I don't know. I separated it, but um, not a lot of people come in here to buy the red version. They mostly want this purple version. So as a result of that, um, maybe that's why they mix it. Nobody buys the red version. But I don't know. That's the way it comes. That's the way I bought it. That's the way everybody else offers it. I'm the only one who generally separates the purple from the red. Though I should mix them, but I don't know. Um, let's turn you around and give that a go. Guys, we're going to do a really quick pod review. This is Ahi Yuyo. This is the purple version I showed you outside earlier. Uh, this is not the red version. Um, so it is a Bacadam, I do believe. And uh, this one's fully ripe. And so we're going to kind of bring you in there, show you what that looks like, and give that a bite. Hmm. That's very nice, actually. It has the bacadam flavor to it, so good. It's not, you know, it's not a misclassification. I didn't look at the flowers on it, but uh, sometimes it's hard. Sometimes it's hard to tell because the flowers are really small on some of these bacadams, and it looks like a bacadam, and it's not. This bacadam, you could taste that bacadam kind of fruitiness to it. Uh, in general, bacadams are generally not really hot peppers. They're hot peppers, but they're not like chinensis, right? Or anums. They can get warm, but just not... They don't generally get really super hot. In my opinion, I don't think bacadams get too much over, say, 10,000 scovilles. And this particular one here, scoville-wise, was pretty low. I'd say it's probably around maybe 1,000 scovilles on that. And that's fully ripe. And maybe 1,500 scovilles on that. It's not spectacular kind of just burning where I chewed it. It's hitting the tonsils, not really the lips. The other side of the tongue, take another bite.
Very nice flavor, guys. Has a little bit of a soapy effect to it. A little bit of soap on that, but it's very, very nice. Very smooth, guys. You could eat this one. I didn't eat anything all day today. I just ate that pepper flawlessly. Usually, I got to eat something before I do these. That way, I don't get like a massive gut cramp. But now, it's affecting the bottom of the tongue a little bit on that. Tip of the tongue, the bottom. Again, about 1,000, maybe 1,500 Scovilles on that. It's really not that hot. I don't want to eat the carrots. Spit the seeds out. <laughs> I should save them, actually. Um, now, flavor-wise, it has a pecan flavor, but it has a slight anum flavor to it, almost. Didn't cross. Oh, my God, it's crossed. No, stop with that. It's ridiculous. Sometimes anums interchange flavors with... Uh, other species of peppers. Um, the macadams oftentimes have that effect simply because they don't always have that fruity taste to them. Some some macadams got really fruity flavors, and some of the macadams, it's a macadam type of fruity, not like a, a habanero fruity. It's got a, macadams have a specific type of fruitiness to them. Um, oh, look. My friend, the, uh, the hummingbird <laughs> comes here to eat the, to suck the nectar out of the. Uh, they come here to get the nectar out of the uh, jewelweed, but so the pecans, if they're very light in that fruity flavor, they tend to take on a characteristic flavor of anum, if you ask me, more or less. So lighter flavored fruitiness on the pecans tastes more like anums, but I could still taste the pecan fruitiness in it. Um, it's just lighter than your atypical pecan. It's a nice pepper. I would definitely give that a go. If you've never grown uh, uh, ahi or yuyo before, like I say, some vendors will give you a mix between the red and the um, the, the purple version like I just showed you. Or on, on hrcs.com in general, we separate the purple from the red. So you can buy the purple and the red or just the purple if that's what you want. It's a nice variety. I'd definitely give this one a go. I don't know if I'm going to winter that plant over or not. I got my hands full this year, but we'll have to see. Anyway, guys, I got to go. If you guys have uh, any questions or any input on anything you've seen in the garden, I tried to give you a full tour. This video is already massively long. Um, just comment below and uh, you know share your thoughts. If you want to share images, by the way, just so you know, I'll leave my link to my Facebook and my, uh, and my Instagram. Mainly Facebook is better. I'll leave a link to my Facebook in the uh, comment section below. And then you could go over to um, Facebook and, and uh, uh, follow me in Facebook. And that way we could share images, right? If you want to share images with me, so that's a great place to do it. YouTube is kind of, I don't know, guys. YouTube doesn't look too good these days. But if you're interested in sharing images and stuff in your garden, join me over on Facebook. There's a number of forums in there or uh, groups we could join and you share those pictures. I didn't start any groups myself, but find me on uh, on Facebook and then share those images that way. It's the best way to get your images to me. A lot of people want to give me images. I, they want to email it, but if I don't get to your email, they get upset. I don't know what to say. You know, Facebook's the best way. I'm always in Facebook. I'm always trying to upload new images. All right, guys, I got to go. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and I will see you on the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.